To those of you who are watching today's Grace Fellowship devotional, we greet you in the name of our Lord. I would like for us to spend just a few moments on a two-party conversation as recorded in St. John chapter number one. Now the names of the two men in question were Philip, whom I refer to as disciple number one, and Nathaniel, whom I reference as disciple number two. Having just been chosen by Christ to be a disciple, Philip, or disciple number one, went looking for Nathan. Finding him under a fig tree, disciple one said to disciple number two, quote, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now, one would think that Nathan would have jumped up for joy at the good news, but instead, disciple number two responded in a sort of melancholy manner. His response was, and I quote in the form of a question, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Well, we ask ourselves the question, why the lack of excitement? I'm going to tell you what I think. I think it was because Nazareth was not known for turning out heroes nor celebrities. Therefore, Nathaniel was sorely disappointed when Philip claimed that Israel's long-awaited Messiah was also from Nazareth. But instead of arguing with Nathan, Philip simply replied, come and see. In other words, if you don't want to take my word for it. Just come and see for yourself. Now, here is my point. We've all, at some time or other, judged life's circumstances strictly by appearance or perhaps how it made us feel. And we forget sometimes that even bad situations do often produce some positive outcomes. For example, even as I speak, millions are being affected by this global nightmare called the coronavirus. One day, it seems that things were going fine, and the next day, the whole world is sick. To quote the President of the United States, quote, the whole world is shut down. But I submit to you that in spite of all this suffering and disappointment, there are some positive things that will come as a result of this dilemma. If nothing else, by the time this virus has run its course, the entire human race should by then at least realize just how vulnerable we really are. No wonder the Proverbs wrote, Proverbus wrote in the Old Testament, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for you know not what a day may bring forth. Folks, believe it or not, we are not invincible. No wonder scripture says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. I was thinking recently about the best tasting bread I ever ate was baked in an oven that was preheated up to several hundred degrees. And though I'm certainly no chef and I'm not a connoisseur, I do know that the intense heat produced by that oven had a positive effect on both the dough and its ingredients, which in turn produced a delicious finished product. I think of what Simon Peter wrote in, in the New Testament. He said, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial that is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. And let me just interject something here. I believe it'll be sooner than it will longer when our Lord Jesus Christ's glory is going to be revealed. 
Should you be a Bible reader, and I hope that you are, then you know that just before Christ ascended back to his father, as recorded in Acts chapter 1, he gave his church a direct order to, quote, go into all the world and preach the gospel unto every creature. But now some Bible commentators think that the church at Jerusalem seemed to want to remain in their their comfort zone rather than to go out and face an angry world and preach the word. Well, in Acts chapter 8, it was then that we read of a great persecution that came against the church at Jerusalem and people were scattered abroad everywhere. And notice what happens. The Bible says they went everywhere preaching the word. One might say, that the pain of persecution had brought revival among God's people and secondly, resulted in the salvation of many who were lost. So then, when will this global epidemic go away? I don't know, and to be very honest with you, I don't know anybody who does. But let me just say to you, there is one thing I know and can absolutely guarantee to the church, and I'm not referring so much as to an organization, but rather an organism, to the church, the ecclesia, the, the called out ones, God's promise the following, all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to to his purpose. Romans 8 and verse number 28. Try and remember this. The best thing God ever gave to us once lived in Nazareth. I want to close in a word of prayer. It's a prayer that was written for the nation of Israel and is located in Numbers chapter number 6. It goes like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance or turn his face toward you and give you peace. Thank you so much for watching.